currently in science and engineering in the 21st century, Newton's three laws of motion are still the foundation. Anytime you're analyzing a system with forces and acceleration, so a mechanics problem, but also currently still part of our foundation when studying force systems is Newton's law of gravitational attraction. And so in this channel, we mainly focus on systems on Earth. But to explain Newton's law of gravitational attraction, we need to start in space, then go to Earth. And so here is Newton's gravitational attraction law. It describes what exactly a gravitational force is. Any gravitational force can be calculated by taking this gravitational constant g times the mass of one object times the mass of, the other, of another object divided by the distance between the two objects squared. And so what this is saying is that any objects that have mass that are within some reasonable distance from each other are exerting a gravitational force on each other. All mass, no matter how small. And what you can also notice is that Newton's third law is subtly revealed here in that a gravitational force, like all forces, comes in a pair. There's no single gravitational force. This is two objects exerting the same force on one another. So what would the gravitational force be between these two planets? We know that because these two planets have mass, they, they are exerting a gravitational force on each other. But the first question is, where do we apply this force? Well, a gravitational force is something we call a body force. There's only two types of forces that exist in the universe, body forces and surface forces. Surface forces take place when there's contact between two masses. They're transmitted through direct contact. If there's no contact, there's no force. All other forces are called body forces. And these are the forces that, that seem to be transmitted through thin air, almost magically. You jump in the air, and without any contact, a force pulls you back down. These two planets are pulling towards each other with no contact. Other body forces are, for example, magnetism, electrostatic force. And these are called body forces for a reason. The body force is equally distributed across all pieces of the body, all particles of the body. Every atom, that body force is equally distributed in the same direction. And so for, and so for a body force, what you can do is you can put the force as acting at the center of mass of the body. That's technically not what's happening, but if you model it that way, you get the, the overall net effect is the same. So the force is at the center of mass, and its direction is towards the center of mass of the other body you're considering. And then these forces come in a pair, so at the center of mass of the other body, you have that exact same force, equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. The distance between the two center of masses is R. And so now you have everything you need. Take G, that's G, times the mass of this planet times the mass of this planet divided by R squared. And that's your forces. So that's your force, your force magnitude. Okay, but for situations on Earth, a lot of problems in science and engineering or on Earth. Well, what happens on Earth is that you can make a, a lot of very accurate simplifying assumptions to this equation. So yes, according to this law, all of these people are exerting a gravitational force on each other. This man here is being pulled towards this man, this, this kid, this woman, and he's pulling them back. The car is pulling. But those forces are going to be negligible. Because look, you have to, those masses need to overcome this constant that has a 10 to the minus 12. So that's why when you see astronauts in the space shuttles, there's no, the Earth's gravity isn't there, but they're not being, they're not pulling towards each other. They're not, gravi they're not, they're not the, the, their gravitational forces are still present, but, they, but you don't see them all of a sudden gravitating towards each other because those forces are so small, their masses are so small. On Earth, the only mass that has any significance in terms of creating a, a real force that, that isn't negligible is the mass of the Earth. Another simplifying assumption is that when it comes to talking about the force of gravity on objects, 
we don't have to think about the earth spinning, the earth moving with a velocity through space. That doesn't come into play. So we can look at earth as just this non-rotating sphere that has a constant density, that has a mass, we'll say, is Me. So we'll say Me is equal to M2, and the mass of an object on Earth is equal to M. That's M1. And we still have R, the distance between an object or a person and the center of the Earth. And this can be different, potentially, if you're in, you know, Denver or, you know, your distance from the center of the Earth can change. So the force of gravity on an object, any object, any body with mass on Earth, a piano, a person, a, a vehicle, is G times the mass of that object times the mass of the Earth over the distance between that object and the center of the Earth squared. And we can rearrange this and say that this force is equal to G M E over R squared times M. Okay, this force, this force of gravity between an object on the Earth and the Earth, that's what we call weight. We name that weight. And let's put the M first in this term second. Okay, this is this weight is still a force though. It's still this gravitational force. But look at the form of this. This is a force is equal to mass times something. Well, we know Newton's law, F is equal to MA. This is an acceleration. And furthermore, it's constant. G is a constant. The mass of the Earth is a constant. The distance between the object and the center of the Earth isn't necessarily a constant. But let's say we take that distance as sea level. Then we get G, the gravitational constant. So if you're on the moon, the mass of the moon is different, and the distance between the, per the object and the center of the moon is different. So you have a different gravitational constant on the moon. And so this G is like in, in metric units, the 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, depending on your problem, if you're in Denver or if you're high, if you're high up in, in the air, maybe this R squared does come into play and you need to and you want to use a, a, an adjusted G value. But in general, this is where W is equal to mg comes from, the weight of objects on Earth. Now, what's interesting to note about this, let's say we're at sea level. There's no, we're dealing with objects strictly at the same, this, this R distance is the same. So this, so this is truly a constant. Well, what's a constant? G is a constant. The acceleration due to gravity on any object due to the due to its the pulling from the earth and now i'll just start saying pulling from the earth because the force that the object is equally exerting on the earth is completely negligible negligible as far as the earth is concerned so the acceleration due to gravity that an object on the earth feels due to the earth's gravitational pull is constant for all objects assuming we're at we're, we're at we're all at the same distance so we're all in the same room let's say g is constant that's why, so do a YouTube search on a video of, of like a feather and a bowling ball falling or a feather and a piano falling. What they do is they have these big rooms, like 50 foot tall rooms, and they create a pure vacuum in the room. And, and then they, they lift up the feather and the piano to the top, drop both of them, and they, they both hit the ground at the exact same time. It's really weird to see a feather fall that fast. The reason why the, the, in real life the feather doesn't fall that fast because of air. And so what? The, is, does that mean the gravitational force on, on, on the two objects is, are equal? No, no. The G is constant. W over M is constant. So the force on the piano is larger than the, than the force on the feather, but the mass of the feather is less than the piano, so it has less, the, the feather has less inertia. It doesn't resist being accelerated as much. Now, this is a weird concept to think about and try and reason precisely why this is happening. And the conclusion I've come to is that I wouldn't bog yourself down with thinking about the precise physics of why this is. Because, because this phenomena, it, it's, it's all rooted in those simplifying assumptions that we talked about. So I'm not sure if you had an insanely precise ability to see 
which object hit the ground first, that it might be a, a you know, millionth of a millimeter that the piano or the feather hit the ground first. Or maybe it is exact, it, it is literally, literally supposed to be exactly the same per the physics. And then if, and if you're thinking about, well, where's this phenomena when it comes to like the sun and the earth or the, or the earth and other planets? Well, in, in those cases, you can't say that the earth isn't moving with a certain velocity or, or maybe even spinning, right? We assume that the earth was this non-rotating constant density sphere for this. And that's an extremely good assumption. That's why the piano and the feather hit the ground at the same time, because that's a perfect assumption. But in space, like with astrophysics, you, you can't make those kinds of assumptions. So I, I don't know. I mean, I guess between the Earth and the Sun, the accelerations are the same because the forces are the same. But then the mass of the Earth is less than the Sun, so like the, the inertia, it all equals out, kind of like this W over M. I don't know, but I'm just trying to give you some perspective on where weight comes from.